Hi everyone. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, static code analysis uh, for Lustre. Um, as every distributed uh, file system, uh, Lustre is a quite complicated piece of software. Uh, however, people rely on it for, it, for their data, so um, it has to be reliable. Um, one of the things we can do to increase its reliability is to remove the bugs it, contain, it contains. And um, one of the way to do so uh, could be to use um, such a tool. So uh, the objective of my, of my presentation is to show how the whole Luster community can benefit from the work we are doing at Bull with uh, Coverity. Here's the agenda of my presentation. Um, so after a general presentation of Coverity, <coughs> Um, I will show how we use it uh, at Bill, uh, the results we, we got so far, and um, how uh, everybody can, can get benefit from it. But first of all, uh, we can wonder uh, why doing static code analysis. A first answer to that question can be found on the HPDD Wiki's page entitled uh, Project Ideas. Uh, where it is stated that a static code analysis tool uh, can help identify potential latent bugs in the Lustre code. Uh, those bugs are hard to find through testing, but uh, are easy to fix once found. Uh, I also like this quote from Humphrey, stating that even good developers uh, would add uh, a mistake for every seven to 10 lines of code they, they write. So now, um, knowing that Lustre is more than 540,000 lines of code, uh, you had a, a good potential here. Um, now, the a general presentation of the tool. <clears throat> Basically, this tool has to compile uh, code uh, in order to analyze it. In order to analyze it. So, um, we build with a specific command that uses a, a coverity tool um, then the build sources can be analyzed. Uh, this is the second phase of the coverage workflow. At this stage, um, we have a variety of uh, checkers. Each one is dedicated to a specific task, like, li like checking for uh, uninitialized variables, um, resource leaks, and so on. Once the analysis is complete, uh, all results are stored in a database, and this database can be accessed uh, with a web interface. Um, here's a screenshot showing um, the overall aspect of this web interface. Um, no matter if you can read, uh, if you can't read the lines, it's just to give uh, an overview of it. Uh, on the left side, you can filter the defects. Um, in the middle, you have the list of defects that uh, you, you choose to, to browse. Uh, just below, you have a code browser. Uh, this code browser is enhanced um, with annotations and ex explanations on the bug that is currently uh, being inspected. And on the right side, um, you can uh, comment on the bug, assign um, a developer and um, a severity. Now, to end with this general presentation of uh, coverity, <clears throat> is the list of uh, defect categories um, coverity can find. As you can see, uh, there, is a, there are a lot of potential sources of errors. Um, coverity can check from very basic things like uh, resource leaks uh, to much more complex ones like program hangs. Now, how do we use uh, coverage at Bill? <clears throat> After discussing with um, some dev developers at Intel, we decided to run this tool on the master branch. Um, that way, it would be much more easier to propose patches to fix the issues found by, by the tool. Uh, however, we still run coverity on the 2.1 branch, uh, just in case we found uh, really major issues. 
On the master branch, the last tag we analyzed is 2363. Uh, the 2364 uh, uh, was just uh, created a few, a few days ago. And we plan to run Coverity um, on every new tag uh, until 2.4 GA. Uh, now the results uh, we got. Uh, when running Coverity on 2363, we found uh, 301 defects. Among those defects, uh, on the right side of the diagram, you have the, the bugs. So we have 195 bugs found by uh, Coverity on the Luster code. Um, so we, we have uh, filtered those defects depending on their severity from major to moderate and minor. On the left side of the diagram, you have um, what I call the not real bugs. So these are false positives and intentionals. False positives are cases where um, Coverity uh, made a wrong analysis of the situation. So in fact, there is no problem at all. And um, intentionals are um, a correct evaluation of the situation made by the tool. But in fact, it corresponds to an intentional, uh, to something intentional from the developer. Um, the problem with uh, those false positive and intentional bugs um, is that they represent a waste of time. We have to analyze them uh, in order to finally realize that they are not real bugs. Uh, so we would like to, to avoid them as much as, much as possible. Um, it's quite easy for um, some kinds of um, intentional bugs like uh, fall through uh, in switch cases and simply uh, a comment uh, by the developer saying falling through can be understood by the coverity tool and then it does not raise any, any defect. Um, avoiding um, false positive can be much more tricky. For example, we have uh, a bunch of false positives with, um, due to uh, function pointers. Um, they represent a, a very complex code pass and simply a coverity get lost. Uh, so we could imagine um, redesigning the code in order to make it um, uh, simpler and, and gain uh, maintainability on, th on that. Uh, but in the shorter term, uh, we could use spe coverity specific comments uh, that, um, that would avoid the tool to raise uh, errors and defects. <clears throat> now, if we look at the 195 uh, bugs, sorry, 195 bugs filed by Coverity, um, this diagram shows um, the categories these bugs belong to. As you can see, we have a majority of null pointer their references. Uh, we also have control flow issues and uh, a third the third category is uh, security best practice violations like uh, buffer copies without checking boundaries. Now if we look at what we got, what we got when we uh, analyzed uh, the Luster code, Luster code on every uh, tag that was uh, created on the master branch. Um, the blue bar represents the, defect, the bugs found by, found by Coverity on each tag. Um, you also have on top of the blue bar a purple bar uh, representing the defects that were fixed in each, on each tag. Um, so if we pile up those two bars, we obtain the number of bugs that Coverity would have found if we had not uh, submitted patches to, to fix the defects. The red line uh, represents the code modifications made between two consecutive tags. This is why uh, we start at zero with 2350, which was our first, uh, uh, our first reference tag. And what this diagram shows is that um, the defects found, the bugs found by Coverity increase with the number of lines changed in the Luster code at each tag. Every time we have a large amount of code that is modified, uh, it, 
developers uh, create new new bugs that are found by coverity. <coughs> Uh, the other thing shown by, the, by this diagram is that um, uh, the blue bar only decreases uh, because we submitted patches to address issues found by coverity. I mean, uh, uh, those bugs don't just vanish by themselves when uh, code, evolve, code, code evolves. If we do the same exercise on the maintenance branch, uh, we can see that this is the same. I mean, the the number of bugs found by coverity also uh, increases uh, between 2.1.0 and 2.1.5. <coughs> now, uh, if we have a look specifically at which bugs uh, were created um, and which bugs were removed, uh, we notice that only three bugs, uh, cover I mean coverity bugs, were removed from 2.1.0 to 2.1.5. Um, the first two ones um, were removed by, by Jira tickets that are completely unrelated to, uh, to, to, to the bug found by coverity. So this is just that the code was redesigned and um, the error found by coverity, found by coverity uh, was removed at the same time. Uh, the third one, uh, a, a logically dead code issue, uh, was fixed by LU570, and we could consider that this Jira ticket is related to the logically dead code issue in uh, lustrepeer.c. Uh, but this uh, Jira ticket is not a, a customer uh, uh, defect. So in, in the same time, 11 new coverage bugs were introduced between 2.1.2 and 2.1.5. So uh, we have a, a plus eight uh, on the number of bugs found by coverity. Uh, what, does, what does that mean? Uh, well, in fact, we, we found out that um, fixing customer bugs is completely unrelated to improving code quality. Uh, uh, we can do uh, both at the same time. They are compatible and uh, uh, improving code quality uh, by itself is useful with coverity. Now, how can we make the whole Luster communi community benefit from our work? Uh, we would like to, to share the, the defect list the, generated by coverity. Unfortunately, this is not really uh, easy. The best we can do is uh, export the list in a CSV or XML format. And as you can see, it's completely, use, completely useless because at best you get uh, a function name and a type of a category of error. So uh, uh, this is not so easy to, to then fix the, the issue. Um, and for licensing reasons, we cannot give access to the web interface. Uh, this is why we decided to open Jira tickets to address the, the bugs found by coverity. Um, so far, we have opened 30 Jira tickets that cover all bugs found by coverity. Uh, they are identified with the coverity label if you do a search on the Jira interface. 13 have been merged so far, and I'd like to thank uh, Intel's responsiveness uh, on, on, that, um, on that aspect. Um, of course, we hope that uh, as many patches as possible uh, will be uh, landed before 2.4 GA. And uh, even after 2.4 GA, our goal is to continue to use uh, coverity on the Luster Cloud. So uh, as a conclusion, um, this presentation um, summarizes um, a six months work. Uh, as we found out, improving code quality is uh, different from fixing customer bugs. Uh, this is why we are convinced it's, it is still useful to use uh, coverity uh, because in the end, it will help improve uh, the overall quality of the code and um, of course, it, the stability of, of the Luster products. Thank you. So, <coughs> so the 
we have four more minutes. Um, we can field some questions if you have any. So, um, Caverdi uh, provides pretty liberal access to open source projects. Um, and one, that, one of my play toys, they, uh, they do the analysis and put it up for free. So, have you talked with them about uh, enabling the web access to the results for Lustre? Um, as far as I know, um, they, they make um, available, um, for example, um, what they get when they run uh, their product on the kernel code, for instance. Uh, but to me, um, you can only see a defect list, but uh, then you cannot have access to the detail of each defect. Am I right? Uh, it seems that this is just a, um, uh, an advertisement for their product, but in the end, you, you cannot really uh, use what, what they show uh, to, to really fix defects. Well, for my toy and for NTP, I was able mm -hmm. to get uh, detailed access to what the issues were, okay. but uh, obviously I couldn't uh, initiate a new run on the data, okay. but I could see the results, all the results. So uh, a question of benchmark, because I'm a benchmark guy. So did you try maybe to look in the areas where there are bugs found and fixed in Jira and maybe to see if uh, do you have enough details or could have fixed them if you had uh, run the cover rating or? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch up on. So uh, let's suppose that there are some fixes in Jira that mm -hmm. already, so you should have, could have go in the previous release and run cover to see if they, they will find, because you said, Customers' bugs are not detectable, but maybe they are, but we don't know how to interpret. I have bad experience with coverity. Mm -hmm. They are good in detecting, but it's very difficult to figure out exactly. Uh, so, did you try that? I think it's maybe it's a good idea to, you know. Um, the, basically, this is what we tried uh, when uh, anali analyzing uh, what was done on the 2.1 uh, branch. So are you able to detect the same bugs and address them? Uh, unfortunately, no. So uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, this is what I, I, I tried to explain. Um, uh, bugs found by customers and that could lead to crash, for example, are not uh, bugs that could be found by coverity. No, no, and I understand that. That maybe as a benchmark to see how, are there any? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Thank you.